so we're gonna I'm, I want to say if you haven't seen it yet if you haven't seen Mandalorian episode seven we're spoiling the fuck out of it so get out and then come back and watch or just you know if you're watching this on YouTube pause the video come back later and watch the entire thing um, yeah we're, we're not we're not gonna spoil Rise of Skywalker but nope. Mandalorian we're spoiling the fuck yeah. out of yep, because it's a show and um. And you it know, came that, out this morning. Yeah, like you had lots of opportunities right, to watch yeah. it. Yeah, it's not in theaters. You could have watched it when I did it, six in the morning this morning. So fuck you if you don't want spoilers. I'm kidding. You guys, I love you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I've been saying uh, this entire time that um, all these characters that we're meeting are going to like end up coming back, right? Because most of them are pretty big names. Yeah. Uh, and you don't... You don't um, you don't hire big names like that and just have them in one or two throwaway episodes, right? And this is—I mean, this... we're talking names like Werner Herzog, mm -hmm. Taika Waititi. Um, what's her name? Gina Jenna, Carano. Gina Carano, yeah. Nick Nolte. Like yep. these are really good actors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, I'm sure they weren't cheap either. Um, so I'd, I'd be trying to use them as much as I could. Um, and this is the episode that kind of like brought everything together, which is kind of cool. And um, mm -hmm. the first, like, the first thing is our buddy Carl Weathers, and I can never remember his act his actual name in the show. Grief Karga. Yeah, Grief Karga. Yeah, he's the um, he's the the bounty union boss. He's like the mm -hmm. foreman, right? Um, yeah. He sends a voicemail to. <laughs> the mandalorian like a, a a holographic voicemail if you will S space voicemail yeah uh, space mail and um <laughs> hey, it says hey look i know we're not getting along very much right now but i've got a problem and i'll make it worth your while if you come back here and help me take care of it and um which is pretty much you come and help me and i'll try to get everyone and their dog chasing you to kind of calm down a little bit and and you don't have to you don't have to give up the sweet baby Yoda or anything. Um, now, if this all, made, I, all I need you to do is come over here and kill this big Imperial. Yeah. Now, um, it's they've made a point of showing over like two um, two episodes that um, the Mandalorian's life after he made this really big decision to just like blow up everything has not been very easy. He's been constantly on the run. He's constantly being chased. He's constantly brushing up with death. And so, like I like the last the last episode, I got this feeling like he's kind of looking to, like, settle down a little bit and like not lead such a you know crazy and hectic life. Um, so I think that's kind of why he ends up like he watches this hologram and is like, I mean, what else am I gonna do? Like you know, yeah. if he tries to double cross me, I'll just kill him. It'll be fine. And um, he sets in a course and of co uh, like. He's like, first I gotta go talk to a buddy, and goes back to whatever planet that one episode with the ATSC was on. For, forest and swamp planet with the yeah. the blue shrimp. Yeah, we'll call it not indoor. For the moment. yeah, okay. Um, and picks up Gina Carano, which I thought so. Okay, her scene. I I, I loved the scene where we got intro reintroduced her. So she and this like big uh, Iridonian are, are have like this electro cable they're, they're wearing these belts and there's this electro cable connecting them they're just having this big bar fight yeah. and like everyone else is cheering and betting on them and that like they, they fight for a few minutes and finally she like is choking the guy with with the energy cable is, rope yeah, thing I've never, yeah i've never seen it in star wars before i have no idea what and the finally the dude taps out and she's just like yeah give me all your money yeah it's the most gina carano thing where <laughs> like her entrance is her beating the shit out of a guy who's like taller than her and also getting the shit beat out of her. Like, this was yeah. not a one-sided fight at all. Well, that's, that's, the, that's like the magic of using Gina Carano in your show is that, like, she's such a good um, action actor that, like, she can take hits like that. And I'm, and I'm sure she does almost, if not all, of her own stunts. Um, and so, like, you got to kind of use that a little bit. And it was a very good fight. Mm -hmm. and, but, I mean, yeah. she still beats the shit out of him. It's kind of great. Yeah. Um, and the conversation that follows is pretty interesting to me because – she was convincingly like because he asked her to help he's like come with me because i need someone to watch my back um and she's like fuck you i'm fine here and he's like well i mean like you know you, you won't have a worry in the world after this and she's like i don't have a worry now what the fuck are you talking about and he's like fine we're gonna go kill an imperial and she's like without missing a beat she's like sign me the fuck up 
<laughs> there's an important part in that conversation where like she mentions that she can't go anywhere because she's like on all sorts of yeah. watch lists on both the imperial and the new republic she's on and the Mando's like, yeah like if, if she tries to go anywhere she's gonna get called up and arrested immediately by somebody or both sides yeah yeah, so she was pretty hesitant to to generally be involved, though I could tell as soon as he started talking to her about a fight needing to be fought, she was like, intriguing, go on. Yeah, her ears were perking up just a little bit. Yeah. Um, all the while, it's important to note here that the, the development of Baby Yoda is very strange to me. We talked about this a little bit on the last show, but mm -hmm. I don't understand. So first of all, he's like, in, in a short amount of time, has learned how to move around like really well like, he's he's not like you know uh confined to his crib or whatever like the little dude can move around and he just like he'll be gone one second like in the last episode he like he was totally stealth playing that fucking droid right and um you see a little bit of him in this bar where they have the scene with Gina Carano and they um they get on the road and Manda's like well our our tour with the recent characters not is not finished yet, so we're gonna go fin, uh, visit our buddy um, Quill on whatever planet he's on. There's a very specific reason they go there, actually. Yeah. So, oh, so, yeah. so so like Mando sets the autopilot and they're they're flying through space. He and Gina Carano go down below to open up the weapons locker, and he says, "Here, you can borrow some of my guns." And mm -hmm. she just starts pulling out the guns, and she's got this giant grin on her face. Yeah. She's having the best time in the world. Yeah. And then they're talking a little bit. And suddenly the ship starts to like rock back and forth, and they're like, "What the are, fuck is going are on?" We under so they attack? go back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they go back up to the bridge, and little baby Yoda is just sitting, like standing on the pilot. He's standing on the control panel because he's so small he can't even stand on the seat. Yeah. He's just like got the controls. He's just like rolling him around everywhere. He's having the time of his life. Yeah, having the time, like absolutely having a blast. <laughs> it's yeah, and so the what yeah. comes with that conversation is this kid could kill somebody. Someone, like we cannot leave yeah. him unsupervised yeah, he will we, kill us he needs a babysitter pretty bad and mandalorian's like i know a guy who i trust <laughs> and so they yeah. go visit our our ugna buddy quill and um and when i when i saw the episode the first time that like they okay so let's get one thing out of the way which is they're sitting there talking and all of a sudden fucking ig11 walks in with a t-shirt <laughs> right yeah and i was like and they like of course they both draw their guns and everything and quill's like could you guys calm the fuck down and we programmed him like he just serves tea now that's all he does yeah he it's serves fine. yeah he serves tea um and of course the man i mean the mandalorian had droid issues before ig11 right yeah and so ig11 is like kind of a big problem for him um he's i think he trusts quill so he's like okay like if you say it's all right then you know i'm still gonna keep my eye on him but it's i'm not gonna be on guard the entire time um so they talked to him about this thing that they're doing and that they need someone to watch um baby yoda and uh Qu like quill because the last time we see him the mandalorian tries to hire him as as like a hand on his ship yeah and he just flat out refuses and was like no because i don't like i'm done serving people i'm not you know i'm mm -hmm. not that person anymore and as soon as he like mentioned someone watching the kid, he's like, "All right, I love that thing." So yeah, and they, and they, I mean, how could you not love Baby yeah. Yoda? He's adorable. Yeah. The, okay. So the thing that like confused me the first time I saw it was that he's like, "I'm bringing my blurgs with me," <laughs> and they're like, "Okay, like what? Yeah, no. what?" So the way it goes is he's like, "I'm bringing my blurgs," and Mando's like, "You are," and he's like, "I have spoken." Yeah, and, and yeah. <laughs> Uh, which is like I'm I'm trying like watching it the first time I'm like, what the fuck could he possibly need? like? Why would you want to bring him with him? But it's it doesn't matter. They they end up yeah. being useful. But um, <laughs> they land on um, it's, something happens because oh, they're they're, no, no, no. they're why flying. Don't you, yeah, why don't you do this? Actually, yeah. You, you so so they're on the Razor Crest. They're flying back to the I forget the the first planet that that where the bounty hunter guy is. Yeah. Um, Mando and Gina Carano are having an arm wrestling match. And Which is like the most, like, it's the most typical thing in the world, by the way. Like, of yeah. course they're going to arm wrestle. Yeah. But, but like, they're arm wrestling. They're it's pretty even. Like, but, but Gina Carano seems to be getting the better upper hand. She's like, I got you. And then little baby Yoda looks up, just kind of reaches out his paw. And all of a sudden, he's fucking force choking her. I, like, 
I okay. So like when I watched this the first time, he's like, "Oh, he's gonna help the Mandalorian win. He's gonna like." Yeah, I mean that, like, that's what him. I thought too. Yeah. But no, he goes like full Darth Vader, and like Gina Carano, obviously, like after they kind of shake him a bit and make him stop, yeah. she's like, "Your kid's fucking evil." Like why <laughs> that was just, not yeah. okay. Um, there there was a, this is like the first um. There's a very subtle reference right around this time where um, Quill is like, okay, so the mud hoarding thing you're telling me about makes a little bit more sense now. And I yeah. don't know what it is, but I've heard of it. Like, I've, I've heard of these things yeah. happening. And you know immediately that they're talking about Vader, right? I mean, he, he worked for the Empire. Of yeah. course he knows oh, yeah, that I Darth Vader occasionally chokes a bitch. Yeah, that's that's another detail, I guess, we kind of learn is that he's um, he was an indentured servant for the Empire. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so th that whole thing they just like they let that s like sit in your mind and rest for a second and uh this immediately prompts this fight between Gina Carano and Quill about where their loyalties are and I I love how the man is like you know what we could do instead <laughs> is Quill could repad this crib and everyone can calm the fuck down yeah and just just because quill is quill is like i'm not repadding your fucking crib i'm gonna build you a new one and it's gonna i'm be making better. a better one yeah and everyone's like all right that's fine so he built he builds a new crib and um so they get there everyone's thinking about how baby yoda is possibly murderous now mm -hmm. and in, including the audience because i'm like okay well is he gonna kill moff gideon now because like <laughs> Like, and that's the thing I was talking about with his development. I don't understand, like, he has no language skills, right? And a, a he, lot he of has no ability to express language. Right. It, yeah. it, it's, it seems like he understands when people talk to him. He just can't talk back. Yeah, at least a little bit. Like, he, he can understand. He, at the very least, he has this, um, in, like, this instinctual understanding of when he's in danger and when he's not in danger, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, like, what he did wasn't an instinct. I, it didn't seem like a life or death instinct for him. I like. I can't imagine that he couldn't pick up on the fact that they were having fun. And then, like, he just—I don't know. I just don't understand. That, like, it, this is one of the cool things about having a species that we've never met in Star Wars before is we don't know anything about anything, right? We don't know how yeah. to develop or anything. So it could be that I mentioned this last time that like a lot of things develop for them first and then their speech comes later. And it seems, it seemed to me in that scene, like he was just kind of like testing out what he could, like how he could affect what was going on mm. or kind of throw the, you know, throw the arm wrestling match a, a little bit. I, I read that more as, Hey, Mando dad is in trouble. Mm -hmm. I like Mando dad. Let's help him choke. Yeah. That's, I mean, I got some of that too, because that's, I mean, that would, that would definitely fall into um, like if he, if he, if his instinct actually told him that the Mandalorian was in trouble, then mm -hmm. yeah, then of course. Um, anyway, it, it sets up a whole bunch of different possibilities for him, and it's not even the first half of the things he does that sets up even more possibilities. Um, so anyway, they get to they get to the the original planet, whatever the fuck it's called, and they meet up with Carl Weathers, a uh, grief cargo, sorry. And, okay, so this is where I have to say, there's something weird about how he talks, about how his dialogue is written. A little show. bit, yeah. And it's, Werner Herzog's character has dialogue that's kind of the same way, and I don't, I don't dislike it at all. It's a little clunky, but what it, like, not, not McClunky, just clunky. But what I really oh. like, what I appreciate is that it feels, so you know, like, you watch old, um, old westerns. And you have, like, since they, most of them happen in, like, the mid to late 1800s, mm -hmm. um, they they speak very proper English and everything. And that's kind of what it reminds me of a little bit. Yeah, it feels a little bit flowery, I yeah. guess. A little bit excessively ornamented. Yeah. So, anyway, um, they meet up with him. And so, Grief Karga's first instinct is, like, you brought a fucking drop, <laughs> like, soldier with yeah. you. Yeah. By the way, I I'm sorry to interrupt. No, you're good. Like, you you sent me two scenes from Breaking Bad where like yeah. where Giancarlo Esposito and and the chemist are meeting out in the middle of the desert mm -hmm. and like after watching those this scene totally reminded me of those so I was I was kind of on watch for like are they gonna start shooting each other like what's gonna happen here oh between uh, Grief Carga you mean 
Yeah. Yeah, it's I I I know what you mean because and I think that they were um they, I think they were foreshadowing what we find out as a plot point a little bit later, right? Yeah, Where maybe. everyone's everyone's very tense. They've got their muscle behind them and they're meeting up, mm -hmm. right? Um Yeah. So the general so, so, so speaking of muscle, uh Grief Cargo has brought three bounty hunters out with him cuz they're going to mm. help back up and and make sure that the plot to kill the imperial goes well. Yeah. Yeah, so this is this is kind of the the plan that they agree on. They are going to go get the Mandalorian close enough to the client, and he's going to kill him, right? And it's mm -hmm. going to be possible because he's going to have these these goons with him that are loyal to the bounty hunting guild, and they're going to help. Um, and Gina Carano uh, is going to come as well. She's going to cover up her, her tattoos, and Quill is going to watch the kid, you know. Oh, you know what? We should talk about Quill real quick because I think this is very important. Um, they have this conversation about um, whether or not Yoda or Baby Yoda, whatever the fuck he is, <laughs> is like cloned from a from a certain line of or like bred a certain way. Yeah. And they have this talk about how I like when when he's talking about how he reprogrammed IG eighty eight that mm -hmm. he taught like he taught the droid everything from scratch. And about how, like, the only way he did it was by affirming the things that he did good. And, yeah. like, that like positive reinforcement thing. And yeah, I was going to say, positive reinforcement. It's yeah. the stuff I, I remember you really liking about teaching. Yeah. yeah, and that's... What's funny is we have this, like, choking scene with Baby Yoda, and that <laughs> conversation is still in my head. But anyway, uh, so Quill's here to watch the kid, pretty much, right? Mm -hmm. um, they get on their way, and they, they camp for the night, and then when they're... Uh, at camp and they're eating that night they get attacked by a, a pack of pterodactyls or, or whatever the fuck they are um, my, my favorite part of this is that like they're, they're sitting around eating M mando asks grief Karga, so what's the plan mm -hmm. and Karga is like being very evasive trying to play off like we don't really need to plan because it, it, it'll uh, go yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, he's he goes gets up to grab some more meat off the thing they're spit roasting and says what could go wrong and then a pterodactyl immediately dive bombs him yeah uh, and tears a pretty big chunk out of his arm too like it yes. like it you know and uh it kills one of the blurgs and then it kills another one of the blurgs which kind of broke my heart because i kind of they're so fucking ugly but i like them a whole bunch like they're, they're inexplicably adorable yeah i just they're they're just so ugly but yeah no i just i love them so much but yeah so two of those are gone they also and, kill one of the bounty hunters yeah um the man is able to like flamethrow one of them and they eventually, you know, that they, they kind of already like, they stole a, a blurg and a bounty hunter. So like, we'll just eat this shit. See you guys later. Yeah. And, um, grief Karga has a wound on his arm. And then all of a sudden the discussion turns to poison. I guess these, these animals have like poison talons or whatever. That was what I took away from it. Yeah. Yeah. And he's gonna die because they don't have mm -hmm. another med pack pretty much. And yeah. so if the first thing is that Grief Karg is being super fucking dramatic about it, right? <laughs> He's like, oh, this is where it ends. Oh, no. The mighty Grief Karga taken down by a pterodactyl. What the fuck Dude, is this world? God bless Carl Weathers. He, yeah. he, like, he stole every scene he was in for this show. Yeah, yeah, I love it. God, I love him so much. And so they're all, like, even Gina Carano is like, would you calm the fuck down? Dude? Just, like, let us, let us work the problem yeah. and calm down. Um, so they, after discovering they don't have another med pack, they're all like, yeah, well, you're, well you're shit, probably, maybe yeah, he will die. You're probably going to die. <laughs> and Q baby Yoda just kind of waddles over and does, does the thing that he tried to do in the second episode where he kind of like puts his hand up and immediately grief card is like, ah, it's going to eat me, <laughs> which is like, <sighs> Because they had this little aside earlier about how little baby Yoda is a carnivore because yeah, he's, he's a like carnivore. eating yeah. little. Yeah, it just it, it little cracks me. Meat. It cracks me up that he's like, he is so over the top. Like he, you know, he's so dramatic. <laughs> um, yeah. But like Quill's like, hey, shut up! I like this kid. Be quiet. Just watch him. And he just makes the wound disappear, and he completely heals him of whatever like poison <laughs> affliction he had. You know. Um. And so I was, we were talking last week a little bit about how the timing of this episode was curious because they broke away from the normal uh, air schedule to make sure that this happened before Rise of Skywalker. 
Yeah. And I think this is the reason why. And I think it's because they, they're they going to set up um, a force power that we haven't seen in the cinematic um, – you know, like the, the like the Star Wars cinematic proper, you know. Yeah. Um, and probably because we're gonna see something like that in the film, maybe. Um, maybe. Yeah, that's that's kind of like what, what you know what I got from it. So. They lived to fight another day. In other words. So they're on their way the next day, and they get to the ridge right before the town, and, uh, Grief Karga just turns around and ices the two remaining bounty hunters <laughs> that were with him. Yeah. And he's like, okay, so I got to tell you something. <laughs> Please don't be mad. Yeah, don't be mad, but we were going to kill you. <laughs> and the baby and everything. And now they're, they're taking the baby to the Imperials. Yeah. But they're right. definitely killing Mando. And, yeah. And... yeah. And so, like, of course, Gina Carano's like, we should kill him. Yeah, we should just kill him. <laughs> like, he obviously, like, can't, you know, can't hurt us or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, the reason is because of Baby Yoda healing him, where mm -hmm. he was like, we were going to kill you, but last night happened, and there's something special about this kid. I don't know what it is, but we're, we're going to change the plan. Now, what I don't understand is why he just didn't tell the other two bounty hunters, like, hey, change a plan. <laughs> Instead, he just like completely ices them and they're dead. But it, that doesn't matter. Probably because they'd, yeah. they'd be in the way later. Like they'd have to write parts for him and stuff. Well, um, that and like he, they're, they're bounty hunters. They do this for money, and presumably they were being promised part of the bounty on oh, okay, Mando. Yeah. So he'd have to pay him some other way. And I guess he just figured it's it's easier and cheaper to just kill him. Yeah, that's probably actually the best explanation for it. Um, so th they come up with a new plan. Because the old plan was shit, apparently. Where they're going to put Mando in handcuffs. Quill's going to take Baby Yoda back to the ship. And they're going to pretend to bring the Mandalorian in with the crib as a decoy that they'll keep closed so you can't see inside of it. Mm -hmm. And when they're close enough to the client, they're going to kill him. Um, and Gina Carano, or I, Cara Dune, mm -hmm. explicitly asks how many stormtroopers are there? And he's like, there are four that guard him. And she's like, you're sure it's four? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, it's four. And she's like, I'm going to ask you one more time. I just want to be absolutely certain yeah. here. It's only four. Yeah, there are four. And he's like, yeah, don't worry about <laughs> yeah. it. There are four. Yeah, it's and four. she's like, four is fine. If it was any more, I'd be pissed. Four is fine. <laughs> so they get to town and they immediately see 20 stormtroopers. <laughs> There's, they're just stormtroopers walking up and down the street. Yeah. They're everywhere. So she like turns to Grief Cargo and she's like, are you fucking I serious? I thought you said there were four. I asked you four times how many stormtroopers <laughs> there were. And he's like, sorry. There's only four guarding him? Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. So they, um, they have this interaction with a, a scout trooper before they get into the town. He's kind of the, like the town guard, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, he like, right as he's about to wave him through. He tells Grief Cargo, like, hey, I'll give you 20 credits for the helmet. So talking about the Mandalorian's helmet. Mm -hmm. And, like, you can immediately see, like, even though you can't see Pedro Pascal's face, his face immediately went, oh, really? <laughs> and so Grief Cargo, of course, who is apparently at this point um, a, uh, a master of the dramatic arts in Star Wars, is like, no, fuck you. This guy's helmet's going on my wall. And... Another look from Pedro Capascal. He's like, oh, really? <laughs> and so he's just like, shut up. Would you play it cool? Like, obviously, it's this kind of like, just be sneaky. And yeah. Um, long story short, they get the Mandalorian in front of Werner Herzog's character. Who? This is inside the bar where Grief Cargo was conducting business earlier. Right. Um, so the thing that really struck me about the, the next conversation is how... Werner Herzog didn't seem that bothered by the fact that the Mandalorian destroyed his entire safe house. Aside from what? ordering a hit on him, right? Otherwise, yeah. seems fairly amicable toward him. Where he's like, hey, that best guy I gave you is payment. Like, you turned that into something really beautiful. That's awesome. Oh, my God. I just realized something. Go on. Okay. So, 
that, so that part of the conversation has a completely different meaning because I just came to this conclusion. Um, one of one of the shots in the tra- in one of the trailers is the blacksmith from the Mandalorian blacksmith being held hostage with by a whole bunch of stormtroopers. Really, I, I, I don't think I remember that one. I I do, and I I just now realized that was probably a veiled threat, right? Because mm-hmm. he's talking about the craftsmanship of the armor and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we'll put huh. that on the back burner. That's probably something that's going to develop later. But he, um, the so in the next couple of minutes, they pretty much answered the questions that we had about the Great Purge, at least uh, like the the part that mattered, which was that Mandalore resisted Imperial rule and they crushed them, mm-hmm. right? Which is more or less what we expected it was anyway. Um, and so they got that out of the way. Um, Werner Herzog's like, hey, I want to see the kid now. And everyone gets super nervous, and they're like, he's sleeping. Like, he'll choke you. <laughs> Don't wake him up. Yeah. And so, like, right – and, the, like, this con- – like, Werner Herzog's, like, in mid-sentence about something completely unrelated and just goes right into it. It's like, I want to see the kid. And everyone's like, whoa, Jesus. And I, I kind of read this as Werner Herzog's character being more than a little sociopathic. Because, like, the, the way he's just so completely calm and relaxed, oh, yeah. even when he's talking about this, like, really serious, heavy shit. Yeah. Yeah, that is kind of the thing that, that threw me, was that he seemed, like, so agreeable about everything. And um, he has a bit of the flowery, like, flowery language that we were talking about earlier, mm-hmm. too. I, mean, I think that's just, he probably made up his own dialogue, if we're being completely honest. <laughs> I probably wrote his own dialogue. Well, he, he probably read the script to get the cliff notes of what he needed to get across and then just said, Ad-lib all right, I'm going to say this however I want it. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, what, what is the thing he said about um, uh, closing up their shared narrative or something? Yeah. It's like, it was a beautifully crafted sentence where I was like, oh, damn, that sounds good, like the way you said that. Yeah. Anyway, um, he's like, let me see the kid. And they're like, uh, he's asleep. And like, right as he's like, show me the fucking kid. A uh, stormtrooper comes up and is like, "Hey, you got a phone call? Come over here." And um, by the way, we we should mention that when Mando, Carl Weathers, and Gina Carano first come into this room, there are indeed four stormtroopers there. Oh yeah, that's, but yeah. but as they talk, like yeah. more and more stormtroopers keep coming into the room, and, and like she is th- so she's so pissed off about it. <laughs> yes. She's like, like they're in the bar. She's like, four stormtroopers? You said there were four stormtroopers." That, like, she was, why are there a billion stormtroopers yeah, you she, said there like, were four she like she gives him shit the entire time about how many stormtroopers there are and at one point he's like look there are more stormtroopers i'm fucking sorry like you gonna shoot me it's, it's really like she was like she had her mind so set on four yeah. stormtroopers it was just i don't know it's hilarious so he gets a phone call that saves them right in the nick of time of them just like opening that that cradle or whatever and seeing that yoda wasn't actually there Yep. Um, so he was walking over to the the I don't know the phone booth or whatever. The bar. And, yeah, the Cause, Mandalorian. Cause the the hollow projector set yeah. up on the bar. So the Mandalorian like like leans over to to Grief Karg is like, "Give me my fucking gun because this is about to get messy." <laughs> and so he gives yeah. him his pistol, and uh, we see for the first time Moff Gideon, who was played, of course, by uh, Giancarlo Esposito, who is uh, Gustavo Fring from uh, Breaking Bad. Um, was also uh, he's in a bunch of stuff. He was in Once Upon a Time um, and other stuff that I I just can't remember right now. But he's he's a superb actor. He's amazing. Um, who like he pops up and he's like, "Hey, how's the whole thing going? Like, you got you got <laughs> Baby Yoda yet?" And Werner Herzog's like, "Yeah, he's yeah, right we here. got the kid. Yeah, yeah, he's sleeping. They won't let me open it because he's sleeping." <laughs> and Moff Gideon's like, "You better check that shit again." And he doesn't even get like finished with the sentence and like that's where mando and company decides they're just going to kill everybody and so they just kind of start shooting out the bar and um Uh, actually the shots come from the outside because there's a bunch there's like six stormtroopers in like completely black armor they're shooting through yeah yeah like mando and and grief car they hide behind the table to like not get killed because Werner herzog is the first one hit and all of his stormtroopers get taken out and like the camera pans up, you see the shot out window. There's the the six black armored stormtroopers, which, by the way, were those were they wearing like 
modern first order type no, armor no those are death troopers we're, we're gonna talk okay. about that yeah we'll talk about that in our in our easter egg segment. okay you know it's i i watched that episode twice today and i did not catch the fact that the shots came from outside i just thought that they were no. all killing them nah, that's, no, they didn't have to that's an entire layer of debauchery actually that yeah. moff gideon had them open fire on their own guys right um, so anyway, the, the Death yeah. Troopers get done shooting. Like every stormtrooper in town comes up and and starts backing them up. So it's just Way this wall of stormtroopers. Way more than four stormtroopers. Yeah. You know what's really funny is that like I bet this entire time Cara Doom probably killed exactly four people. It was like <laughs> fuck it, that's all you paid me for. You get four. <laughs> fuck, I'm done. I'm out of here. Yeah. Um. So the so yeah, camera pans up from all these stormtroopers. You see this Tie Fighter coming down, and it's like a pretty fancy Tie Fighter. Well, at first like, it looks like just an ordinary Tie Fighter. Yeah, but then, it's, then it comes down to, the, to to land, and you see, like, the wings start folding up, and then, like, the, the top hatch opens, and, like, there's this rising elevator or something that comes out of it, mm. and you see Moff Gideon yeah. coming out. Yeah, which, um, I, this is a good, a good part to mention that um, his favorite role of mine is in um, uh, Breaking Bad, where he has a, a very prominent Chilean accent. And hearing him just have a like a normal white guy accent was really weird for me. Um, like, it's like a perfect white guy slash a little gay. And I, I, mean, <laughs> I say that as a gay man. Like he's like there. There was just like a little bit of an inflection where he seemed just a little prissy about everything. Um, and yeah, he just kind of marches up, and it was like, um, oh, you know what we forgot? What? Oh, the the scout troopers because they're yeah. listening in onto the comm link. So so. Mando, like while all the shooting is going on, Mando is is radioing to Quill saying, "Hey, get is, is the kid back at the ship yet? Because you really need to get the kid back on the yeah. ship." The there are way troopers... more than four stormtroopers yeah. here. <laughs> so the scout troopers, w when they first came into town, are listening to this because I guess they were using an unsecured channel or whatever. Yes, stormtroopers are smarter now, by the way, yeah. than they've ever been. So so the scout troopers jump on their bikes and they go charging off into the desert and uh, start chasing down Quill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, uh, they and there's uh, Moff Gideon's little speech. I don't remember the specifics of it. Right. Well, but... the the specifics of the speech was, um, you have no idea what you have, and you have, you have less of an idea even than that of what it means to me, and I'm gonna get it, and there's nothing you can do about it. And right around this time, Quill is killed by this this um, the scout troopers, and one of them rides by and scoops up Baby Yoda off the ground. And that's the end of the episode. They did this like stereotypical Western thing yep. where you don't see Quill die. You don't hear any blasters mm -hmm. go off, but you just see little baby Yoda lying in the dirt mm -hmm. and then Scout Trooper scoops him up and they ride off. And the camera does a slow pan and you see Quill's corpse. Yeah, which it was visually stunning as, as a piece mm -hmm. of cinematography was visually stunning. And I've got to say very brilliant very yeah. affecting yeah we should also mention this whole time ig11 is on the razor crest mm -hmm. uh while they were serving tea. landing yes yes um while they were landing mando was talking to cara dune saying that droid is staying on the ship i don't care what the fuck else happens that droid is not going anywhere with us yeah that's um that's almost definitely uh going to come back by the way 100 um, percent. yeah so um the i've got to say that the second that they touch down on Quill's planet, I've seen enough Westerns to know that <laughs> the guy that everyone likes is going to die, right? That ha It happens yeah. in every... Like, the, the hero survives most of the time. The guy that everyone has, like, warm feelings for, like, you know, the nice guy that everyone likes, they always, always die, right? So I, I knew as soon as they picked him up that he wasn't going to make it, which, which made me really upset. Um, cause I, like, I really liked him. They, they, they made him such a unique character with this tagline that like now everyone repeat, like it's a meme now, right? It's just, yeah. it was, it was so brilliant. So, uh, taking stock, baby Yoda has been kidnapped by Mock Gideon's goons. Mm -hmm. They are, they are pinned down in a cantina and we, you know, find out next week what happens to our hero, the man. Yeah. Know. Um, and okay. So, question. We yeah. have Mando, Baby Yoda, Cara Dune, Grief Karga, IG-11. 
obviously Mando is going to live. Mm-hmm. Who dies? Well, I think IG-11 actually pro- is probably destroyed. Um, and I, I could see Cara Dune surviving. Okay, so you're saying Cara Dune, Baby Yoda, get out alive? Uh, about- yeah. And, and the, I mean, in the Mandalorian. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I think um, the, like she, her character is such a survivor um, and, and such a, an experienced and uh, effective fighter that mm-hmm. um, I, I could see her, like, it wouldn't surprise me necessarily. I know they would never do this, but it wouldn't surprise me necessarily to, for her to be the only one that survives, which is also mm-hmm. kind of another, uh, w- with the exception of the Magnificent Seven, uh, a westerny trope too where the super tortured war veteran is there after everyone has died right yeah. and and continues his life of of being the survivor and, and being tortured because of it so personally i think carl weathers is dead oh yeah i, I, oh, I think yeah. he's gone yeah but which like, makes me upset because i'm starting to like him a little bit yeah like he he knows his way around a blaster but i don't think he's he's equipped for a fight like is gonna is probably about to go down yeah um i think ig11 makes it out alive oh, okay. just because that would be really really funny to see mando have to deal with this assassin droid that he's obviously got huge issues with i think that there's something they've got to pay off with ig11 that ensures his destruction you know how ig11 like in the very first episode ig11 just walked into that compound to start shooting everybody mm-hmm. I think he's going to do something very similar again. Just yeah, walk they, into the back of the stormtroopers, just blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, I think, okay, so they there was this running gag in the first episode about him trying to self-destruct, mm-hmm. right? And I think that's going to come back. Oh, what if he he could self-destruct, couldn't yeah. he? I think, I think they've got to pay that off because it, it, it would be kind of satisfying to, to see mm-hmm. him being like, oh, I've got to self-destruct to save everybody or, or whatever, you know, yeah. and him actually being able to do it um so yeah I, i'm not sure um so we still have no idea w- what the thing is right like what what moth gideon wants with baby yoda mm-hmm. i mean th- there's a whole like we're in the middle of that story and we don't know the beginning or the end of it right we only know this like small little snapshot of what we've been shown so we have no idea where he came from or like if he was made who made him and why or where he ends up right so this and we have we have one episode yeah. to wrap that up in, by the yeah. way. Yeah, which means that, I mean, you know, they're, they're going to make sure, of course, they're going to have a second season. Um, I think they've, they've greenlit the second season before even the first one aired, I think. Um, <laughs> sounds about right, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like, of course, there's going to be more, like, they're going to leave us on a cliffhanger, right? Like, of course they are. Um, so, yeah, it's, um, it's very... I, I, I got to take this time to say it again. And I, I know this is like the part of me that, that has this tinfoil hat expectation about this, but we're going to see a Jedi in this show. Mm. I, I would bet so much money on it that like they're getting as close to the force as they can without having just a Jedi there anyway. Right. Or, or some kind of force user. And What's the one thing? I mean, what's the one thing in this show that everyone's obsessed with? It's Baby Yoda. And, Jedi. Yeah, and it's yeah. well. I mean, this show in particular, The Mandalorian. People are okay. into Baby Yoda. Yeah, it's, and it's his, Baby Yoda. Yeah, yeah, and and his ability to lift mud horns up and to <laughs> choke fucking Cara Dune and and heal things and and the, that cute fucking face he makes when he's like <laughs> scrunching up and trying to concentrate and stuff. And has gonna, this incredibly emotive ears, how they yeah. kind of droop down when he gets sad. Yeah, he's. We've got to see a Jedi, and I swear to God, and I, I don't have any like I don't have any proof or or anything other than just a hunch. Maybe it's the Force telling me. I think it's gonna be Luke Skywalker. Depending on the time frame, he might be the only Jedi around. Yeah, that's by process of elimination. If I'm buying into, if I'm buying into the idea that there must be a Jedi, it's got to be him, because there isn't anyone else i mean this is only seven years after return of the jedi and he hasn't gotten around to training his jedi yet so it's only it's just him and in fact Mm -hmm. they've got luke skywalker in the period of his life where he's just traveling from planet to planet trying to learn as much about the force as he can and uh, and collecting old old relics and stuff and 
what better of an activity could you be engaged in to find out about a, a possibly cloned or naturally born force sensitive creature as the same species as his fucking master on Dagobah? Like, how does that not first escape the eyes and ears of Luke Skywalker? And two, how does he not try to find him? I think there's a very good chance we see Luke eventually or some other Jedi eventually. I don't think it's going to be the next episode. I think that's going to be something that's going to have to pl- happen in another season because they've already got this incredibly tense situation. There's going to be a massive firefight here. Yeah. I think the action that they've set up is going to take up most of the last episode. Yeah, no, and I agree. Ho- hopefully they'll pay off some bit about why the Imperials are so interested in Baby Yoda, but like mm-hmm. there's just so much pent up action that oh, yeah, they no, need no. to get through. I don't think they have time for anything else. No, no, yeah, I I agree. Um and, like I don't think we're we're going to see him in this because I Okay, so one thing you have to acknowledge is that the Mandalorian is the hero of this story, right? Um Luke Skywalker is going to be the hero of whatever scene he's in. Like, mm-hmm. th- there isn't a there isn't a character in Star Wars that's going to share a scene with Luke Skywalker, and up and upstage him, right? So pretty much it's, a it's, default, yeah. Yeah, the it's the Mandalorian show. He's the badass, right? And so I think that he like I I don't first of all I I I, I see no possibility of Luke just showing up and saving them. I think that's stupid. But also I think that Luke shows up in a situation where they're not in mortal peril, right? Because, I mean, like, you know, more than four stormtroopers is a big deal for them, but more than four stormtroopers is nothing for Luke Skywalker. Like, it's it's it, it's child's play for him. Like, it's, it wouldn't be that big of a deal at all. So, like, he, he can't show up when they're having some big fight or anything. He's Like, he's got to show up when, you know, they can focus on the story and, and like, maybe how we found out about how everything's happening and, and stuff like that. Um, so let's talk yeah. about a couple of um, Easter eggs that I noticed. Um, okay. one, of them, one of them isn't necessarily an Easter egg. It's just something I noticed them saying that I was kind of like, what does that mean? Where uh, Quill was talking about what, um, what kind of uh, gene pool or whatever Yoda might have been born from. And he said something about strand class. Did you notice that? Yeah, I think that's Star Wars talk for like a clone or a genetically modified being. Okay, yeah, that, that's something I didn't recognize as a term before, um, both in real life and and or Star Wars. So, yeah, I'd never heard it before. I'm just going off the context of their yeah. conversation. Yeah, it was it's it's hard for me personally to understand Quill a little bit when he talks, and, and I'm not sure if it's because of my own hearing problems, uh, or or maybe it's like his dialect or something it just like i have trouble understanding what he's saying sometimes so i think part of it is that his his puppet mouth doesn't always sync up with what nick nolte is saying so his his lips his lips aren't like they don't actually form the the actual word you're right yeah yeah so 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 if you're looking at him when he's when he's speaking you're missing out on the context of like reading his lips yeah right um, so of course, Moff Gideon was was in himself kind of a huge Easter egg. Um, not not his character specifically, but the fact that they still have Moffs, which is a um, uh, a title that we've heard before. Uh, yeah. So like Grand Moff Tarkin or uh, any of the other you know local governors, as, as Tarkin put it, that kept systems in line and stuff. Um, they they were called Moffs. I I. <laughs> My interpretation of that is that Gideon was a moth before the Empire fell, mm-hmm. and he just kind of kept his title. Either that, or he was like some middle-ranking Imperial officer who eventually backstabbed his way <laughs> yeah. up the ranks, and then just just said, "I'm a moth now. Who's gonna say I'm not?" Yeah, or just after the Empire fell, was like, "Fuck it, I'm a moth. Why can't yeah. I be a moth?" Yeah, why not? Um, he's. Um, have you ever seen uh, the Postman? with um kevin costner no but i remember you telling me about this movie a lot yeah the the bad guy was was um it's it's this dystopian uh uh post-apocalyptic america story and the the bad guy is this militia leader who sold copiers before the apocalypse and and uh because of this the situation was able to um discover his his own capacity for 
ruthlessness and and uh, charisma to lead an army and stuff, and yeah, sure. and, and and like ended up leading this this big militia. And that's what Moff Gideon kind of reminds me of. Not knowing anything about him, like I don't know anything about his story or anything, he kind of yeah. reminds me of that a little bit. Um, so who knows? Uh, we talked a little bit about Death Troopers. Um, yes. So uh, Death Troopers uh, were premiered in Rogue One. Um, and they're pretty interesting. They're they're interesting in the fact that a they can't be below six feet tall, mm-hmm. um, because they wanted them to look naturally tall compared to the other stormtroopers, which they do in this scene that they're in. Which means I think that they're actually legit death troopers. I don't think that they're guys that found the armor or anything. Like yeah, I think they're legit death troopers. Uh, we of course saw uh, a couple of scout troopers as well, which is a nice callback to um, Return of the Jedi. Um, I think they're still riding the same bikes they had on Endor, actually. Yeah, yeah speeder bikes. I, I guess those must be like Empire issue, like regular. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, which, by the way, suggests more and more that Gideon had some existing Imperial power base that he's maintained mm-hmm. rather than being an upstart. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't actually think he's like a self-appointed moth. I think that he you know he, he's probably there already uh probably you know i bet i wouldn't be surprised if they if they don't draw us or if they do draw some parallels between him and admiral dalla from hmm. the uh the expanded universe where she yeah maybe of, yeah she was she was like a brilliant tactician and everything before the empire lost and then afterwards she you know she led she was an, an admiral or whatever yeah um, the new tie fighter of course um mm-hmm. which from a distance looks like a regular tie fighter but has like a special landing mode. Where yeah, I'm a- I'm around. actually surprised they had Gideon come down in a Tie Fighter because like those are not exactly known as luxury vehicles. I would have expected a Moth to be like flying around in one of those like Lambda Imperial. Class. Yeah, yeah. Or, or like the the shuttles we see in Return of the Jedi when Vader and the Emperor are coming to the Death Star. Yeah. Um. Well, we haven't seen the inside of this Tie Fighter. Like he could have a TV and shit in there. We don't know. This this is true. Yeah. Um, so back to this genetic conversation that they're having, um, uh, Quill references the cytocaves of Nora. Hmm. Did you catch that? I don't think so. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's what he said. Um, I, I can barely read my writing, but, um, so it's either a reference to a, it's not, it's not a thing that exists in the current canon that I know of. Um, and like my, you know, my knowledge of canon isn't like absolute or anything. It's fairly close on certain subjects, but I'm almost positive this doesn't really exist before, um, before this episode. So that's kind of a neat little thing. And mm-hmm. uh, the the two, I guess the the two big pieces of of information that w- are Easter eggs and and hints and and, and kind of uh, illicit theories. Uh, about the the future of the story is Yoda's ability t- to use the Force. Now, we, like of course, we know that Force choking is bad. Usually, um, the the one exception yeah. is that Luke uses the Force choke on on the Gamorrean guards at the beginning of Return of the Jedi. Um, but there, you generally kind of associate it with Darth Vader. Well, to to quote Kyle Katarn from the old extended universe powers themselves aren't good or bad it's how you use them that sounds like the most nra (laughs) like (laughs) we won't get a little little bit bit, yeah that sounds sounds super nra um so that um i i I think that most people associate with vader and like dark side powers or whatever um i think what they were i think what they were trying to get at was that yoda or baby yoda they need to name him like they he needs a name because i'm really tired of calling him yoda because he's not yoda yeah um they're making a point to make sure making sure that we understand that he's a blank canvas right that he's he's not a jedi he like he hasn't gone through hundreds of years of uh of training and programming to be to fight off emotions or anything or or to seclude his mind or or to quiet his mind he's just a force sensitive being who honestly is hanging out with not the best guy in the world like the Mandalorian's a great i love he's a great anti-hero i love him to death but the dude is not a good guy and it's like it's okay that he's not a good guy i like the fact that he's not a good guy but he's not and that of course would affect the development of a blank canvas 
in different ways. So I think that that's that that's what the whole conversation about um, uh, Quill uh, reconditioning the droid and teaching him, and this thing where Yoda tries to kill Cara Dune. I think what they're trying to put in our mind is that he's kind of a blank canvas and he needs to be taught to um, to either do the the good thing or the bad thing and 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 decide on what, like which one he is, right? Um, yeah, I, I think that's a fair summary. Yeah, and then his his healing powers, which I mentioned earlier, um, <clears throat> don't really appear in the cinematic Star Wars universe. Like we don't see that in a in a film. Um, I can't remember if we've seen it in Clone Wars or not, uh, or Rebels. Um, I'm tr- I'm sure that we do, but it's it has not happened in this in the cinematic Star Wars universe. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think that um, it's it would be. Like the, the, the concept of, of using the force to heal is all over like the books and the old video games, but it, well, it's not was, so much. Yeah, that, that was an entire like a, one of Luke's students at the Jedi Academy was exclusively a healer, right? Like she. Yeah, she, she, she was a Mon Cal and she was just right. really good at healing. Yeah, she, I mean, she had a lightsaber, but she was mostly like she didn't have an interest in fighting or anything. She that was kind of her thing. She she, she healed from things. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that's kind of an interesting thing to have because like. When, when you hear George Lucas talk about which things are canon and which aren't, his idea was that the the movies are first and foremost the the highest authority of canon, right? So if there's something mm-hmm. in the movies that don't quite jive with something in the book, the book is wrong, and the movies are correct, right? So yeah. the fact the fact that we've we've gotten a little bit closer to the films, like canon wise, and so that's kind of a big you know it's a big deal that that's kind of a ca- like a canon. Uh, power now um so yeah that's that's pretty much what i got did you catch anything else um i don't not really uh, aside from the fact that when they get to the bar and they're talking to Werner herzog there's a droid bartender which Mm -hmm. suggested to me that like they that the imperials are in rough enough shape that they don't really have any human servants around anywhere so they have to use droids or alternatively just that they trust a droid more to keep its mouth shut yeah maybe um the the usage of droids in the star wars universe is kind of weird um in uh, on canto bite for example everyone's favorite part of last jedi um they refuse to use droid servants because it's it's the um, it's the ultimate show of luxury to own another sentient being, right? Yeah. Um, which is disgusting, by the way. Like that that as a thought and as a concept is disgusting. Which you know, Cantabite is a disgusting place. So that's you know, it yeah. Fits in. So yeah, it, it could be their lack of resources. Um, he might have just been the bartender before and just didn't blow up when when the Mando attack happened and was like, all right, well, I guess I'm doing this <laughs> some more now. Um, yeah. So it's um, I think John mentioned to me that that particular droid showed up at, at Jabba's palace somewhere. I can't remember if that was I like, can believe that. I think was he cause... the droid that was like torturing the other droid with like the hot press? Or is that a different? I think. Think so because I don't think, yeah, it definitely wasn't the the overseer droid that was telling yeah. R two like you'll be useful or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. He, it, he it, shows it, up somewhere. It's, it's a very familiar model, yeah. at least. Yeah, it was, it was kind of cool to see. So anyway, that's um we we've kind of we rolled our. Th- that's the thing about how they've um they've developed the show is that the theories that we've that we've had before haven't been proven impossible right so Mm -hmm. um we don't like doing a a week by week like theory um editing session uh isn't really that helpful because we haven't gotten any new information that helps us preclude or exclude anything as possibilities right so um yeah Honestly, don't other than other than the like admittedly tinfoil hat Luke Skywalker thing, um, I don't really know. It, like I, I'm not really sure what's going to happen because this this format is so new to Star Wars that it like it it's hard for me to to think about where it's going or because I mean there's so many things that that are in the show that 
go beyond my knowledge of Star Wars, like like Baby Yoda. That's the first thing they could have done to really like any like huge Star Wars nerd. If, if they wanted to be like, hey, we got to confuse these guys. Here's a Baby Yoda. And then like every <laughs> fanboy in the world like me is like, what the what? fuck? Yeah. So like, I don't know what the fuck he is. I still don't know. I still don't know what, you know, we've talked about maybe the fact that he's, um, they were trying to farm him for midi chlorians or he's a cloned Yoda or something, or maybe it connects to Palpatine's um, uh, eventual resurfacing in Rise of Skywalker somehow. Yeah. I, like, I have no idea. I don't know. You know what's going to happen is we're going to go see this movie tomorrow and Baby Yoda is going to be a character in it. Oh, God. Like, with, with like the ability to talk and shit. I, d- I find that hard to believe, actually, just no, because too, the, 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 the movies so far have been very reluctant to bring in stuff from like the from like the cartoons and, and other mm-hmm. stuff. For instance, I guess the only real exception being General Grievous in Episode Three. Who, if you hadn't seen any of the Clone Wars stuff, he kind of comes out of nowhere. But yeah, yeah, he does kind of. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure. I've, um, we will say uh, we'll be recording our Rise of Skywalker stuff um, after the movie, but we're not putting it out quite yet. We'll, I'll probably put our spoiler-free like review out um, uh, as soon as I can, uh, just because I won't have any spoilers or anything in it. But we're like. We're going to do exactly what we're doing right now, where we, you know, we sit around a table and we nerd out about Star Wars and we retell the story to each other and, and remember the parts that blew our minds. And um, but we'll wait a few days before we put um, before we put that up. So uh, anyway, do you have anything else? Have I missed anything? I'm kind of I'm looking at the chat a little bit. This this is the thing is that like we put these on YouTube. So I, I would like want to make sure that people watching YouTube don't have to listen to me answering chats like on a live stream that they weren't a part of. Yeah, it's just most of my buddy Gordo and my buddy Noah just talking about different things. No, I, I think we just about covered everything. He said that um, was the, the droid bartending in episode five. I I can believe that. What? Where in episode uh, five is there a is there a? I think. Well, is he referring to Mandalorian episode five? Oh, maybe. So I'm trying, trying to think back. Which one was? Yeah, he might have still been there. Actually, that's yeah. that's probably what he meant was that he's just the the same droid, you know. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, uh, that's all I've got for today. So, um, if you guys are around listening to this after the fact, uh, make sure you go subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, just search for Jedi Enclave. Uh, right now we have all of our comments locked, uh, because we don't want anyone spoiling the movie for anybody. So. Um, if you're somehow here from Facebook, uh, like our page and interact with us there. We like to talk to nerds and talk about Star Wars. And that's pretty much all I do now is I talk to Chris about shit that I read about Star Wars. I play Battlefront and I talk to my dogs about Star Wars. It's just a fun life. Um, Did did the dogs ever talk back? No. (laughs) No, they are. They are real fucking asleep right now, though. (laughs) I've got a blanket for them like right here and they're, they're very cozy. So. Uh, Anyway, yeah, we'll see you guys later. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we will see you guys on the next show.